Hi, y'all. Welcome to Moon Show. Great to have you with us as we rock and roll. It's already terrific Tuesday. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it. Hotline. And we'll be getting in touch with Leesville. And we're going to do a road trip with uh, Dallas at Hickson. All right, we got everything okay. I got to get with my good friends down in Leesville and uh, let them know we're going to come. So anyway, 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. Donald Trump, President Trump fires the acting AG. You're fired. Matter of fact, wasn't he on a program one time where he got to tell people you were fired? <laughs> <laughs> now it's the real world he's telling people he's fired. By the way, he's had to fire people before. All right, let's jump gears. Congressman Ralph Abraham joins us. Congressman Abraham, 5th Congressional District in the great state of Louisiana. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you guys doing? You're doing great. Good to have you. Well, uh, right, thanks for having me. I think uh, the president's off to a rousing start, and I kind of laugh at it because of the people freaking out. Uh, and I don't think they're freaking out over much, but they are freaking out. Well, you know, up here it's uh, crazy every day. We have to basically wade through protesters usually anywhere we go these days. But you're right, I mean, why would they expect uh, anything different from President Trump? He's, he told him exactly what he was going to do. He's a man of his word, and he has kept his word. So, look, I'm all for him. Well, it's, uh, it is amazing at how quick – that he's jumping on it, but on the flip side, that's ex- that's exactly what he said he would do, especially when it came to the illegals. I think the argument with uh, immigrants is is not the argument. The, the argument is against illegals. I don't think there's a uh, argument against immigrants, and I think you agree with that. But 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 they they twist the turn, and it's really not a it's really about illegals coming here. We have a right to protect our borders. Uh, Obama had an open border policy that, you know, I, I use this as an example, uh, Congressman. Would you let anybody knock on your door at any time during the night and let them in? Let them in your house. Don't know them. Don't know who they are. Let several people in your house at one time. Just let them walk in the house and say, there's the food. Enjoy yourself. You can sleep in whatever bed you want to. You wouldn't do that. No, you're exactly right. I mean, we would do that. And, again, this is all about illegals. It's not about immigrants no. per no. se. Uh, and I would refer – the listeners uh, back to a couple of bills that we passed on the House side, uh, H.R. 158, and if I remember right, H.R. 4038. Uh, these were bipartisan bills that Democrats voted heavily for that mm-hmm. did almost exactly the same thing that President uh, Trump is doing right now. So it's a lot of hypocrisy up here. Uh, you know, my motto right now is I want to keep Chuck Schumer crying every day. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like to see Chuck, Chucky cry a lot more. That means yeah, we, we're advancing the agenda. Yeah, and whether they're fake tears or real tears, you know, <laughs> Trump gave him a 5% chance of being real. You know, I don't care. As long as he's having to go to the microphone every day and uh, rant and rave, it's a good day for me. I, I, you know, I didn't think about it like that because I think he's surely one of the worst. Uh, might be a good guy for you if you know him, but I just don't think he's a – He's a guy that cares about the country, and uh, it's a shame that we we watch this. What Donald Trump did with the with immigration, dealing with three, I mean, sorry, six or seven countries, he took the countries that Obama said they needed to be vetted more, and then they went after them. Nobody else. By the way, he went after the region, not the religion. Once again, the left, like they spend immigrants versus illegals, they're spending religion over region, which is ludicrous. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, this is not about the Muslims. This is about Islamic terror and global terror in in general. And let's be very honest, it is because of Obama's uh, chaotic Syrian policy that we're in this mess to begin with. If he would have uh, manned up and did what he said, uh, enforced the red line, uh, you know, we probably wouldn't be nearly in this predicament. But, uh, you know, I put all the blame here on the Obama administration. Trump is is the fourth batter in the mix. Uh, he's just a cleanup man, and he will clean this stuff up. Uh, just hold on to your uh, saddle because the ride is fixing to go even faster. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate it. Uh, Congressman Ralph Abraham, my special guest, and, of course, he is in the 5th Congressional District in the northeastern part of the state. He kind of goes down through Ellick and cuts over, but it's uh, pretty big landmass uh, for him. The I, I just I look forward to more things that he's going to do. The left is going to freak out, and well, there's nothing you can do about it. He's got to keep driving the issue and driving the force. I just hope some of these Senate Republicans don't rally against him. I'm worried about the McCain's and the uh, Lindsey Graham's in this case. 
Well, uh, and again, you're right again. Uh, we have got to have unanimity uh, at the uh, Senate level. We've got to have all 52 senators on board because what's going to happen tonight at 8 o'clock? He's going to announce his Supreme Court uh, justice nominee, and the only way that I see we get it, we getting it through is through, uh, you know, party line votes. And uh, so we will probably have to use a nuclear option like we're going to probably have to use on 90 percent of these uh, nominees. So they've got to get on board. And you know, it's amazing when Obama was sworn in the first time, seven of his nom- seven of his cabinet picks automatically went in. I think the people have had enough of uh, this kind of politics. Yeah, I really, right. I, I really believe that, and I think people. You know what? The Democrats, everybody's going to kill old people, starve poor people. I mean, it's just all that, and it never happens. But yet they tell people that, and people buy into that mess. I think people are seeing through that now. Yeah, and again, the people are much smarter than I think uh, a lot of the uh, Democrats up here, as far as uh, seeing through the facade of what the Democrats are saying. You know, President Trump is President Trump. I'm uh, glad that, uh, you know, he's our leader. He's going to lead with strength, uh, unlike others that, uh, you know, led from behind, uh, such as our president. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, again, seeing what he's going to do. I wake up every morning. Uh, the first thing I do is look at my tweets <laughs> from the day from, from the I, thing and see what he's done. If I was on Twitter... I do have a Twitter account. I just never made it active. I'm scared I might say something I don't need to say, and I get into trouble. I get into trouble enough Monday through Friday. Now look, I understand completely. So I decided not to do that. I really did. I said, you know what? Enough's enough. But anyway, if I was on it, that's what I would do too. I would look and see what was blown up next, and I, I laugh you know, at it. What, he, what he's done, he's he's certainly uh, you know gutted Obamacare. Uh, you saw we did with the Mexico City policy as far as defunding abortion. Uh, he's going to build the wall. Uh, he's taken EPA head on. He now, as you saw yesterday, has taken regulatory reform. Where if you're going to have a new regulation, you got to take two away. I, I really that. like that. By the way, I think that's great. Oh, it's it's phenomenal. And again, it's it's you know what we call uh, budget neutral. He said you can have this new regulation. You got to take two away, but you can't spend any more money. So. You know, I think it's phenomenal. And as you saw today, uh, he is going to withdraw from that ridiculous. Uh, climate pact. Yeah, and I love so, that. I mean, we, we, you know, Obama, as he was out the door, threw them like $120 million, just, uh, hey, here you go. So, right. you know, this is a man that does keep his word, and that's what the people are asking for, Moon, is just keep yeah. your word. Yeah, the thing about it is, I saw he's going to get out of the climate change, which is the dumbest thing. I just laugh at us being in something like that, which is, makes no sense at all. But Obama throws him $120 million, million uh, right. walking out, he throws the, what, the uh, Palestinians, yeah, uh, 221 million. Yeah, we, we, I, I think we're going to get all that money back. Uh, yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. Obama's doing that, and the, and the press never reports it, and they never get that's on right. him for doing that. And then, But, boy, I tell you what, Trump's battle will be keeping Republicans online because some of them are going to wimp out to what the press is reporting. The press is never going to say anything nice or good. That's who they are. I think people are seeing through that now. Oh, no, you're right. Uh, the press, I don't think, will ever get on board with this president, uh, even you know, four, six, eight years from now. So it's got to be a daily battle uh, to put our boots on and, and fight for what's right and uh, fight for this president, fight for our conservative. Hey, let, let me ask a question, we'll do doctor. And you're, and you're, and you're a doctor too. The, uh, and I talked to John Kennedy, a, a new state Senator and a United States Senator and uh, some other people. I, I'm still worried about this Obamacare thing. Here's my concern. Uh, the Democrats own, and it's horrible and Trump's right. If he just left it alone, disaster. It's going to start being a disaster for companies and everything else. But he said, well, we're going to get it fixed. And I agree with that. And by the way, someone like me is paying $32,000 a year now. I can't afford that. I can't afford the deductible. The medicine that I'm paying because I have a daughter who's a special need child, uh, it, it, I just, it's no way. No way to maintain it. But I'm, I'm worried that everybody gets caught into the poor or somebody else getting subsidies when they when they price in probably fifty or hundred million people out of the market, and so I think Republicans are a little scared because the press never covered Obamacare properly, ever well, covered. But when it, if we pass something new and Republicans are the ones on board, they're going to pick it and rip it every chance they get, and that's why some Republicans don't want to really do a quick change. They're scared of what the press is going to say. 
Yeah, but, you know, again, they've got to find the moral courage to do this because you're right. I mean, the people will see through the uh, the media, you know, as far as what we do on the Obamacare repair and replace deal. It's going to be good. We're going to take care of the poor. And you're exactly right. Even those that are getting the subsidies to the tune of about $43 billion last year, yeah, yeah. Uh, their deductibles are so high, they're six and $8,000, that they are they don't have any insurance. So, but see, what, you know, the, I, yeah, what they're doing, <laughs> what they're doing, uh, Congressman, is they they the poor is not going to be helped no more than it was. the The people with the subsidies are not going to be able to afford them, and we've seen that. And then people like me, they price totally out the business. Boy, that sounds like a a a, a very good uh, health care system for people to be involved in. Yeah, and what you're going to see with the Republican plan, the poor are going to be taken well care of. And you know, go back to what you said earlier. You're exactly right. President Trump is simply looking out for the people. He doesn't have to look out for Trump anymore. Trump's got everything in the world he needs, I think, in the in worldly good. Mm-hmm. But now he's looking out for people that he wants to represent. And again, he's got his heart in the right place. I think his mind's definitely in the right place. And now his pen is in the right place with executive orders. So he's going to do a good job. Well, anything else you want to add before I let you go, sir? No, look, I just appreciate it. And uh, you guys have a great day, and uh, we'll catch you, there. We'll catch you right. later. All right, thank you. That's uh, Congressman Ralph Abraham, 5th Congressional District. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. All right, Brian, before we get to that, uh, Clay Higgs. People had asked me, uh, Congressman Clay Higgins, I ain't heard a whole lot from him. I didn't expect to hear a whole lot from him. Getting ready to hear from him. Uh, Cincinnati defined President Trump's crackdown on illegal immigrants joining a group of major cities, welcoming people in this country without permission. I want you to think about that. Welcoming people in the country without permission. It's illegal and it's breaking the law. This is why we're having a problem in this country. It's not Trump. It's not Trump at all. It's the ignorance of people that is, oh, yeah, welcome everybody. Just let them on in. And when our country gets to be blowing up every day, you're gonna be, people are going to be going, what the hell do we do? Standing aim at several of the regions, Muslims, Catholic, Jewish, and political leaders. Proudly announced Mayor Cranley. Cincinnati is a so-called sanctuary city. It means Cincinnati will not enforce federal immigration laws against people who are here illegally, something the city has already been doing. You know, think about that. I don't give a dang what the law says. I don't care about the Constitution. I don't care if they blow everybody up. By the way, all of them are not going to blow everybody up, man. I don't care what they do. But if you don't have borders, a constitution in this country made of laws, what do you have? Now, Brandon, we're going to pull up Clay Higgins because Clay Higgins uh, gave a speech on the floor. And they had little bits and pieces of it. And then I want you to come back, when we come back from the break, if you can find Bill Clinton again. By the way, Bill Clinton, the rock star of the Democrat Party. Anyway, Congressman Clay Higgins, here we go. Madam Speaker. The rhetoric coming from my colleagues across the aisle and the liberal media regarding President Trump's executive order to strengthen America's policy is harmful to our country and is placing law enforcement professionals at risk due to incited protest. The fact is that President Trump is protecting America by strengthening our vetting procedures. The details of his order clearly state that the allowed level of immigrants from the affected foreign nations is essentially the average rate of the 15 years before President Obama's dangerous expansion of the program in 2016. President Trump's executive order has simply restored sanity to America's immigration policy. It was President Obama who, against all reasonable consideration, put the American citizenry at risk in 2016 by his massive expansion of immigration from nations that are known to produce radical Islamic terrorists. Thank God that President Trump has upheld his oath to protect American lives. This order puts a temporary pause on immigration from seven countries, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Somalia. The governments in these countries are either hostile to the United States or presently in great turmoil. 
As a professional law enforcement officer for the last 13 years, I've paid very close attention to the insane policies that put American citizens and American police at risk. I've watched carefully and prayerfully as terror attack after terror attack has shed American blood on American soil. And I've been privy to many jihadist plots that were stopped because of the dedicated courage and skilled law enforcement investigators, the same cops that have been years maligned, attacked, and murdered across our nation by Americans incited to violence by dangerously irresponsible rhetoric from the left. It's clear to me that the status quo immigration policy will not control the threat, and I'm thankful that President Trump is using his office to reverse the madness that preceded him. America's war against terror should never evoke partisan revolt. We, as members of the People's House, must recognize that the American people are not willing to accept radical Islamic terror within our borders from immigrants or anyone else as a fact of American life. President Trump's executive order for a short-term ban on entry from countries that are known to foster jihadists, combined with a systematic review of our immigration and vetting procedures, is both necessary and reasonable. Madam Speaker, the time for weakness has passed. Now is the time for strength and courage. Now is the time to reform our border control and immigration policies. President Trump's order is not a betrayal of American values. His actions inspire hope to the millions of Americans who have watched our nation decline over the past decade, watched helplessly as radical Islamic horror has gripped the world, and unbelievably been allowed into our own nation with wanton disregard. Now is the time for America to embrace its rightful place as leader. All righty, that's uh, Congressman Clay Higgins. So pretty dang good, if you ask me. Thank God we sent him there. All right, guts over politics every day, folks. Don't forget that. And that's what we did, sending Clay Higgins there. Guts over the political system. Hope I hope I don't think Facebook. We'll be right back. Hup, hup, hup. I'm going to get my own band and go out there and start singing. What you think? We got a chance? I think that's a horrible idea. <laughs> well, hold and up. I don't stand by it at hold all. Hold up. Hold up just a sec. Hold up just a sec. See, you, you told me this earlier today when we was talking about you were laughing at all the things I do. Yeah. I said, I'm going to go out and get my own band. Do you think I'll make it? I never said I was going to play in it. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I was going to sing in it. I was going to go get my band and book the things and make a little money in the revenue. <laughs> like, you think I'm going to sing? Really? <laughs> the people in church don't sit by me. Mm. So they have to listen to me sing. And there are a few tough ones that yeah. will sit by me uh -huh, uh -huh. to sing by me because it makes them sound better. You get the drift here? It's kind of two different people. I I'll tell you what, I, I, almost every time I go to church, no matter what church I've ever been in, why is it I'm the only one on the road most of the time? <laughs> I've never figured out. And look, I bathe. Look, I smell fine. At least I think I do. My family sits by me. I really, I've always wanted, <laughs> they kind of have to. I right? look down and I go, there's never anybody. They used to joke at the church I was in Monroe, why nobody ever said about it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Matter of fact, folks, don't email me and let me know. I have no idea and don't want to know. All right, four, four, seven, I, six, would, six. I, I could imagine if we <laughs> ended up going to a church service together, I'd be there trying to, you know, worship, and all of a sudden you're talking in my ear about, no, Walker's eighth grade that's not true. Team. That's not true. Talking about how Doming did this <laughs> and Bouillon did that. I would be <laughs> in there singing and praising the Lord. I don't. I don't sit there and talk in church. Might be the only place I don't sit there and talk. But yeah. <laughs> that's why they, they. They. You know, they kicked me out the Catholic Church. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You know why? Why? Because when I went when I went to confession. Mm. The priest would fall asleep listening to me. I'd talk to him so long. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I'm joking, folks. I didn't get kicked out of any church. I'm just messing with you. All right, 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. Let's do this, Brian. Let's take a call. Mm -hmm. I want to play Bill Clinton again. Uh, Bill Clinton coming back after what Higgins said, what the president's doing. Bill Clinton back in 95, who basically said the same thing Trump said, claim he did all this stuff. Not one protest. Not one. 
Let's go to Chuck in Texas. Chuck, how you doing? Hey, Moon, how's it going? Going fine. So I'm starting a new band. I just got to get to members. I understand. I understand. <laughs> I got a, about three topics real quick. Uh, the first one is, you got a pen handy by any chance? Yeah, I always do. All right. Write this down for me, please. I talked to you about a month and a half ago. You'll probably remember me. I want everybody that's listening to go to YouTube and put in In Plain Sight. It's a documentary. Watch that for me, okay? In Would you do that, please? Plain Plain Sight. No, I got it. I wrote it down, my friend. All right. Cool. All right. Now, next, the, on the illegals and the immigrants. Now, think about this, Moon, and think about it real hard. If you were getting the hell bombed out of you, and I'm a, a well-read, educated redneck, mm-hmm. and I'm a Republican, and I love Trump. But if you were getting the hell bombed out of you, why would you not get out of the country? And first of all, tell me what, why we are over there. Because when Bush was there, there was no uh, weapons of mass destruction. That, that's, I mean, that's a known fact. We went over there for God, gold, oil, and drugs. We stole everything they have. I hate our government. And then second of all, if you'll look at the countries that there's a, not an international bank that the Rothschilds don't own, guess where we're going? And look at it. Mm-hmm. I mean, people are so asleep. They're they're so dumbed down by the education system that they don't even know what's happening right in front of their own eyes. How come we're not on nine eleven instead of talking about all this other crap and not getting Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld not hung by a tree? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. We just let them get away with it. All right, brother. Nobody, nobody wants. I'm nobody a, I, wants to talk about it though. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, look at the uh, in plain sight. I got it, and I'm gonna do it because you asked me to do it. I'm gonna do it. It's a great, great project for me tonight. Thanks for the call. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. Man, they're protesting. We got people in Cincinnati, California. Said they may make the whole state a sanctuary uh, state. The whole state a sanctuary state. In other words, they're gonna not listen to the law. They're going to not uh, conform to the laws of our land. They're telling us that. You know, if you talk about abortion and the slaughtering of innocent children, well, it's the Supreme Court. It's the law of the land. Killing babies is the law of the land. And then you come back and talk to the same side that would tell you that. Obamacare passed the Supreme Court. And you say, what about immigration? Are we not paying attention to that? Why not? We've got laws on the butt. Don't matter. We're not paying attention to that. We're going to be a sanctuary state. And the thing the thing that Congress and president can do is say, good, okay, California gets no money. Ooh. California prohibit local law enforcement from cooperating with federal immigration authorities, creating a border-to-border sanctuary in the nation's largest state as dang dumb Democrats ramp up their efforts to battle Trump on the migration policies. We're talking about illegals, folks. That's all we're talking about here. Legislation scheduled for first public hearing Tuesday as the Senate rushes to enact measures that Democrat lawmakers say would protect immigrants from the crackdown. We're not talking about immigrants. We're talking about illegals. It's two different groups of people. But let's listen to former rock star of the Democrat Party who could misuse a woman quicker than anybody ever. But the Democrats would never say a word as he misused women, even as young as 19 interns. Rock star, what did he say about all this? All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country, are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace as recommended by the commission headed by former Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. We are a nation of immigrants but we are also a nation of laws. It is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years, and we must do more to stop it. All right, and, and, and you notice Bill Clinton, a rock star, a man who misused every woman he could possibly misuse. 
But of course, he's in the Democrat Party. You could be a racist as long as you turn to the Democrat Party. And, and one of the things he said was that self-defeating. That's what these idiots with the signs and going to the airport, oh, it's lead, it's your lead, and all that crazy stuff that you're watching. They don't have a clue. These people really don't have a clue. And I wonder if it's they paid by George Soros because they don't have a clue what they're talking about. They really don't, folks. I'm not a bright guy, but I never said that I was a bright guy. But I can see things that these people don't even want to see. And we're going to have sanctuary states now. We're not going to enforce the laws. Okay, well, let's quit enforcing the abortion law. Oh, no, Supreme Court said you can kill a baby if you want to. That's a choice of a woman. To kill a baby is a choice. Wow. This is what these people are. Look at what the left does. Everything. Anti-Christian, anti-God, anti-freedom. Everything they do. Anti-family, anti-American. People vote for that and don't even know what they're voting for. Uh, by the way, this debate over sanctuary cities reached a fever pitch in 2015 when Katie Stalin, 32, was fatally shot by in the back of Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, who was a, in the country illegally after multiple deportations to the native Medico. Okay? And when you look at what Trump's doing, he says, now y'all got to report all these crimes. The president's not going to do that. They're not going to do this. Folks, we're talking about illegals. We're not talking about legal citizens. Let me tell you something else. We're trying to get Judicial Watch on. And I got something on that with illegal voting. There's a lot of people voting over here that's over here legally. There's people over here legally that are voting, but they're not citizens, which is illegal too. They're predicting somewhere between one and a half and two million people. I hope Trump continues to go after this. I really do. It's not that everything is cheating, but I really believe. I really believe if he goes after, he's going to find a lot there, and they know it. That's why they land it on thick. They don't want him really doing this. They didn't think he would. Let's go. All right, quick break. Paul and Lake Charles, Mike and Elliot, we'll come to you. We'll start with you guys. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. Hickson has it hotline. Take a break. Be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. If you'd like to be part of the Moon Graffon Show, it's your opportunity to be a voice. A lot of stuff going on, boy. I'll tell you what, it's it, it's exciting every day just to wake up. Uh, the uh, the crazies are going to be out there, folks. There's just nothing you can do. You can't tell them nothing. You can't explain it to them. Nobody's against legaliza- legalized immigrants. Nobody's against that. Absolutely, I'm not. I tell you, how many of you people think if you're legal, uh, legal to be over here, immigrant, but you're not a citizen, should you be able to vote? Just, just kind of curious. Newsmax had a piece. Tom Filton with the uh, Judicial Watch got some great stuff in there. Hope to share it before the program's over. On how many people are over here? About forty-three million. Nine citizens in the United States right now. He's he made a good point. I mean, tell me some of them are not voting. We're supposed to be naive and think that tens of millions of people are are here. President of the United States, more of them are legally voting. In states where you don't have to have voter ID, in states where most voter registrations you're not required to certify citizenship other than signing and saying you're a citizen. It's been happening. I'm telling y'all, they want don't want Trump on this. Trump fires the AG yesterday. He's not going to, the, the AG was not going to follow through with what he said you need to do. So he fired him. You're fired. Just that quick. Out. Get the hell out. Next person coming in said, I'll do what I'm supposed to do. Gone. Zero. Zilched. An Obama pointy. So get out of there. Let's go to Paul and Lake Charles. Hey, then, Paul. Uh, good morning, mate. Isn't it, isn't it nice to see these Democrats squirming? All right. I don't think, I think it's worse than that. I think they're pooping in their pants. Because it's got a smell to it that I don't like. Yeah. Uh, this is just a small example of of what we'd have been faced with if Trump wouldn't have won, if, it had, if, she, if Hillary would have won. Hillary would have won. I couldn't imagine the Supreme Court justice pick. I could not imagine. Uh, I just, dude, I, I, I guess we could imagine. That's why we voted against her. Well, our lives, as we know it, would really change 
Well, it's going to change anyway. I still think, <clears throat> not, to, not to be negative, I still think we got some tough times. I still think uh, when you borrowed as much money and run as much debt as Obama and the, and the, and the legislature has done, uh, you pay the price for that one day. Uh, well, speaking I, of that, that's, that's what I wanted to ask you. The state, let's get to the state level. What uh, is going to have to happen for them to finally understand the problems that we have financially of trying to support all this, all these government uh, departments? You know, they, they're not willing to cut zero percent, you know, out of any of these departments. Uh, what they're going to end up with, listen. You're watching it unfold now. I'm going to get to this in a second. Hour. But since you ask, Paul, I'm looking and reading about the public schools bracing for more cuts. Higher ed, health care. They got one. You ready for this headline? For some Louisiana families, all they want is to not have to bury some of our children because of budget cuts. Special need children and things of that nature. I understand that. But we have a problem. It's systematic, and it's a spending problem. We don't prioritize anything, okay? And if we're not going to do any of that, and we're not going to worry about the spending, we just raised $2.5 billion, and it's not enough. They don't want to change anything. They just want more money. Bell Edwards is not trying to change one thing. Bobby Jindal didn't change one living thing. Nothing. Mike Foster didn't change that. Blanco didn't change anything. We've been watching this for 40 years. Edwards, Treen, Romer, none of them. And the legislature keeps going along. Ever since John alario has been down there, we run our state to the ground and nothing changes. Nothing. So how does giving them more money going to change it? Well, and it's not. That's why it's I not. Think, I think the whole – I think we're actually going to have to implode or to, uh, to start over. I'm, I'm afraid it's going to be like that everywhere. I mean, well, they, I mean let me tell you what they don't talk about. The, that's a great example. California. They don't look at the they don't look at pension funds imploding because we pay too much money out. They don't. The guaranteed retirement, the best retirement in the world, comes from government. We don't look at that. We're not going to catch up our unaccrued liability. We don't fix roads. We don't fix education. We don't take. I mean, we don't do anything but keep spending money, raising taxes, crying about what's going to happen, and go do it all over again. That's exactly what's happening. And that's why you got to tough people, tough leaders do tough things. We got a mindset in this country of a socialistic country with half the people. That's why they're protesting in the streets. They don't understand what illegals have done to other countries and refugees and all this stuff. We got to have a border. You get vetted when you come into this country. That's not hate, that's loving the people that are here, that's loving the Constitution, loving our freedoms, and loving our country. You would vet somebody. I guarantee you, Paul, if you didn't know me, I couldn't knock on your door at 10 o'clock at night and say, hey, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I need a good bath, and I need a place to sleep. How about it, Paul? Well, you go, You go. who the hell are you? You wouldn't get it. You would say, oh, come on in, man. Come on, bring your family. Come on in. What, they, look, the refrigerator's no. right there. Y'all can go sleep here. You, would, you wouldn't vet them? You wouldn't vet the person coming you, in your house? You would have picked the wrong house. I can promise you that. No. Let these people crying out in the streets start opening their houses to all these illegals and let them just walk, come on in. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. And government doesn't have unlimited money because I don't have unlimited money. You don't have unlimited money. So government doesn't have unlimited money. It's, it's crazy. Oh, I would love somebody to pose that question to Schumer. Well, why don't you take in a few? To your no, brother? don't do that. He might start crying. <laughs> <laughs> he might start crying. We don't want that to happen. Anyway, I got to run. Y'all have, have a good day. Let's move on. Alexandria we go. Let's go to Mike. Mike, welcome to the Moon Graffon Show. Thank you for calling, sir. Hey, hey, hey good, good to talk to you again. Yes, sir. You know, I wanted to speak about the ban. Um, I think, you know, whether like it or not, that ban is illegal. Uh, it's, it's not going to fly. I think there were also five federal, or four federal judges that won't enforce that ban either. Mm -hmm. Poorly crafted and poorly implemented. You think what's poorly crafted and poorly implemented? The the ban, the executive order with the uh, with the ban that well Trump they really they, they uh, uh, well first of all it, it wasn't a whole lot to it. Number two. We better do something to protect the borders. I don't give a dang if it's a federal judge or not. And by the way, the federal judges that are against them, mostly Obama appointed. 
Just letting you know that. Well, you got to give me the rest of the story true. here. Most true. of them are Obama's people. What? Most of them are Obama's what, people. Don't. Those people are lawyers. You don't think they looked at it? They've been doing this thing for 25 years, and then you have Trump, who's never did it, and he has, I understand, he has some staffers writing it. It's illegal. You got folks with visas who can't get into the country. So, you got folks that so, are translated so, for our troops. So, they don't die. so, so they, they don't they're they inconvenient. So, we, I've been inconvenient. I've been inconvenient with Obamacare hey, man, for eight years. No, I've been inconvenient. Like I've been inconvenient at the border. For eight years, I'm going to be inconvenient if I get blown up. I don't want to hear that crap. I really don't. So somebody got inconvenient while we get it straight. So Trump didn't get it perfect the first time. So what? Obama opened the door. Sir, why don't you let people at your house open the door and put a big sign? Anybody wants to sleep or live in my house for a few days, be glad to take you in. No vetting. No vetting. Why don't you put signs up, you the liberal uh, lunatics? Put signs up. Any refugee, illegal, murderer, thug, whatever, criminal record, you're welcome at my house. Put signs. They can drive up. They can pull up in your house. They can walk in your house. Leave your door unlocked. These people calling probably all got alarm systems. I wouldn't doubt it. So you're going to sit here and say, well, you know, there's some noisy video judges who think what Trump did was wrong. Well, then if it's wrong, we'll get it straight. But I know this, he's at least trying to protect the United States of America and the citizens in it where the president before you didn't say a dang word about his ignorant policies of open the door and just come in. She whiz. All right, David and Stonewall. David, go. Yes, sir. I think this um, thing about the attorney general, I'm just going. Go, I, go ahead. All right, Brian, I lost him. You want me? I, 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 he's coming in and out. I can't, I can't really hear him. We got to take a break anyway. We'll try to get you back on on the, on the flip side. All right, 844-766-6607. Hickson has that hotline. Why don't these people just open their doors with signs in their front yard? If you're here illegally, you have a spot in my house. Let them come on in. Feed them. Clothe them. Let them take a bath. Let them sleep. I mean, do your part. Love on them. They not one of them going to do that. Not one of these crazy leftists. All right, we got to take a break. Be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. They are. There are legal immigrants here. They still shouldn't vote. Uh, give me an example. Somebody writes this to me. Moon. Uh, Ebola breaks out in Lafayette Housing Authority. Lafayette government makes a decision that no one is allowed in or out of that housing authority. Uh, Ebola. Ebola killed people. Anyone with a first grade education can see that letting people in and out would be harmful to the population as a whole until the virus is contained and eradicated. A city councilman releases a statement expressing his concern that Lafayette government is trying to keep black people in the projects. Again, anyone with small amount of education realizes that skin color is 100% irrelevant in the situation, but not to a councilman. As if no other than, uh, other than black people living in a housing authority. That's a great, great example. Craig, appreciate it. That's right on the money. That's not what the left does. And they're helping the press. They continue. It's my example. It's my example that I'm trying to say, would you let somebody in the house without vetting the person coming in your house? And when I say vetting, it may be just because you know them or you don't know them. I just can't see that we're going to say, somebody's going to come in the house, <clears throat> you're going to let... Uh, you're going to let, Brandon, make sure you get. Uh, the, you know, you, you, you're not going to just let people come stay in your house and live in your house and do what they want to do. It's not going to happen. Obama allowed it. They're never going to go against Obama. Worst president we ever had by far. It's not even close. What Trump's doing is trying to restore us back to America. America first. America great. Protecting our borders. We are a country of laws. And if we're not going to rely, Bill Clinton said it. So, anyway. Oh, man. It's unbelievable. By the way, the guy that Trump 
Uh, Donald Trump has promoted authority on voter fraud. He's, he's registered in three different states, Brandon. He only votes in Alabama, okay? But he's listed on the voter rolls in Alabama and Texas as well. I think that's amazing. You know people are cheating. You know it's easy to do. The guy's proven it. I'm telling you, this voter fraud thing, they have to go through. All right, let's jump gears. Louisiana uh, All and Gas Association, Mr. Gifford Briggs joins us. Gifford, how you doing? Okay, hold on. We're getting ready to get him. Now we got him. Gifford, how you doing, bud? I'm good, Moon. How you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, first, uh, uh, without going into much detail, how's Dad doing? I mean, you know, everybody reads that and Dad had a fall and a and an accident, but how, I saw way he, he was he uh, had made it home. How's he doing overall? He's good. You know, we're continuing to see progress every day. He's good. he's uh, he's working as hard as he can to get back so he can and continue to pick up the fight and 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 take on all those that want to keep the oil and gas industry down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, your dad. I told somebody the other day. Uh, when we got in touch with you, I told him that uh, I said, me and Don go back a long time, good and bad. <laughs> I said, but the bad did not wait a good. And uh, anyway, I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us this morning. Yeah, you know, we got we got pipelines being built. We got we got the oil and gas industry and the comeback. Where are we on all this stuff right now? And, and what does it look like in the near future and, and, and in the distant future? What, what do we look like? Yeah, well, without trying to get too much on my on, uh, pull out the crystal ball, I mean, I think generally uh, since the uh, election of Trump that there's been this renewed optimism in the industry. You combine that with, you know, current OPEC reduction in production, and, you know, we, we've got some good things going in the industry, and people are, are feeling hopeful and optimistic again, which is, you know, that's it's not something we've had for about two years right now. So I think everybody's kind of enjoying it and you know there's a little bit of hiring going on and and you know look well i don't know that we're headed to hundred dollar oil again but if we could stay in the 50 to 55 range for a little while i think i think everybody would would be pretty happy and and hopefully put some people back to work yeah the uh you know trump winning put a lot of optimism back in the prices you know if it if it was 65 right now which would be overbearing on the on a motorist, but it, it would sure help the industry pick up those great middle class jobs, uh, get those uh, smaller companies that have branched off to service the industry. It would really help all that. Just sixty five, if you knew it was going to be steady for two years, there would be so much excitement it wouldn't be funny. Oh, I would gladly play, pay the extra fifty cents a gallon of gas, mm-hmm. and I think most people in Lafayette, Acadiana, Homa, Shreveport, all these areas that have been so hard hit by this, this oil and gas downturn, we'd gladly pay 50 cents to have $65 oil, you know, for the next five years. Well, you know, to be able to get to some level of predictability. Well, not only that, uh, your friends and my friends would be working again. Instead of maybe doing something they don't want to do right now, trying to survive, they'd actually be working in something they really want to work in again. And I, I you know, I, I tell my friends when I was in North Louisiana, I, even though I understood the oil and gas industry enough, because I had, I had my associations from Lafayette to Lake Charles and Baton Rouge and being on the program. Uh, but some of them didn't understand that dollar ninety seven gas is not acceptable. I mean, you're not paying the same thing for a cold drink, a gallon of milk. You're not paying the same thing for clothes, cars, and nothing like that. So we're, we're, we're basically in prices back in the 80s. Yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people in America, and I'm not going to throw Louisiana, and I believe that we should be entitled to, to almost free or cheap gasoline. And, and the reality is, is that a dollar ninety-seven to move a vehicle down the highway is is pretty much free. And um, you know, we we, you know, we in the industry work hard. We pay our employees very well, um, and, can- and they work very hard to produce the oil and natural gas that powers this country. And Look, sixty-five dollars isn't going to break anybody's bank anywhere in the country, um, but it's going to put a lot of hardworking Americans back to work. Yeah, I, I can. Uh, I don't think people understand two fifty, three bucks, and some people even want it more than that. I don't know about that, but two fifty, three bucks a gallon means there's a lot of people in that Louisiana's working more importantly. Now, friends in Texas, to Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, I'm glad they're working too, but our people in Louisiana are really working, really doing well, and it goes on to everything else because those consumers now have spendable money in their pockets 
to do the things they've been doing. And uh, I'm looking at the big picture like you are. That's why I ask you, look, this, if there was a crystal ball to tell you exactly when all this stuff would kick off, uh, you could be a multi-zillionaire tomorrow. But the bottom line is there's no crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen today. No, we don't know what's going to happen today. I don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow and, and there'll be something different. But, you know, the good news is is that we're, you know, we're seeing policies being enacted in Washington that roll back regulations, that reduce the overall tax burden, that encourage oil and gas companies and energy companies to go out there and make investments, and they know that they're not going to have the federal government come down on them with a hammer the day after they make them. And I think that alone is going to help you know, rejuvenate an industry and encourage investment and help put people back to work. Yeah, no doubt about it. We're talking to Gifford Griggs and, of course, Briggs, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, he's uh, talking about the oil and gas industry and, and, and what's going on. And, uh, you know, and, and, and look, the technology in, in this business is phenomenal. And that's helped create jobs, too. Just the technology side of the oil and gas industry is so much better than it was 10, 20 years ago. Well, I mean, we have unleashed natural resources that we didn't, that we knew we had, but didn't think were ever economical. I mean, the Haynesville Shale has been there since the dawn of time, and we've never been able to tap the resource the way that we do today. I mean, we drill 10,000 feet down and, and 10 to 15,000 feet laterally now and, and produce an amazing amount of resources, and we're seeing a rejuvenation and in, in, in energy production and improving our national energy security. And it's all because of hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling. Mm-hmm. And by the way, that's 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 all something new that came on because of the technology. Now I did hear, and, and I don't know if this is true. You can tell us that the Haynesville uh, shell was trying to start going again. Is, is is that some truth to that? Look, that that is the only bright spot that we have here in Louisiana right now. I mean, we've got zero rigs running in inland waters and five or six rigs running on South Louisiana land, but. You know, we've had 13, 14, 15, 16 rigs running the Haynesville Shale. We're seeing natural gas prices kind of rock back up. And we have this incredible in, industrial renaissance going on where Lu- Louisiana is going to be the center of the world's LNG export economy. And we need reliable uh, supply of natural gas to make that happen. And the Haynesville Shale is right there to provide that. So, you know, you're going to see some uptick in activity as, as companies try to get all the supply of natural gas down to all the Chenier and all these other amazing facilities that are being built in coastal Louisiana. Yeah, no doubt. Toward the Lake Charles area, that way, it's, uh, it, it's really been a bright spot. I, I talked to people over there, and uh, if we get the rest of the, the southern part of the state, and by the way, all and gas from Shreveport to Monroe and all the way through, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big deal. It just employs so many people. At, without question, and you know, Lafayette and Homa have been hit, you know, two of the hardest hit cities in the entire country for job loss. Yeah. You know, and um, we need to get those people back to work. Jeffrey, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Louisiana Oil and Gas Association. We appreciate it. God bless. We're praying for praying for Don, praying for a recovery that uh, maybe he'll get back up and running soon. We'd love to see that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Gifford Griggs. Thank you, Gifford. All right, quick break, folks. More to come. Moon Graffon, I promise get your calls. I know y'all been waiting. We will get you as soon as we can. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has that hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. It's an opportunity for you to be boys. Don't forget, walk-ons, the official sports bar of the Moon Graffon Show. We love walk-ons. And you will love it, too, if you just go. It's kid-friendly. I got a big section down there for people to eat. The kids love it. Especially if you're sports fans, sports teams, and things of that nature. But just the average person is going to love the great taste of walk on. I promise you. Good stuff, folks. All righty. 844 766 6607. Hickson has a lot. Of, do we need to go to him first or play the thing first? We need to go to Marcel, okay. the meme master, first. All right. Marcel, what's going on? By the way, we have offered Marcel <laughs> to take Marcel to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse if he'll pay. He's not, <laughs> he's not jumped on that yet, but we're waiting. Hey, guys, how y'all doing? Doing fine, sir. Man, Moon, I'm just waiting for you to take me and Brandon to Shucks and <laughs> maybe, oh, that, have that. Flowers for, maybe have flowers for each one of us. That, <laughs> hey, that's a done. That's easy. We can do that. <laughs> Man, uh, isn't it insane how Chuck Schumer just a few years ago was saying how he was all on board and how we needed to protect the United States. He was on board for a ban. Well, Marcel, days, Marcel, days ago he's crying. yeah, but by the way, Marcel, you're right. He's crying now, 
But let's go back, and Marcel helped get this. Says, let's go back to Schumer just a few short years ago when he wasn't crying. 2015. 2015. That's a few short years. That's a year ago. Basically over a year ago. Listen to Chucky the crybaby Schumer now, but listen to him back then. Every refugee has to be vetted. And uh, they have to make sure that there is no connection whatsoever with terrorism. If there is even a doubt, they should not be admitted. Every refugee has to be vetted. If there is even a doubt, they should not be admitted. This executive order... Dude, dude. Dude. Was was mean-spirited and un-American. There he is, uh, Marcel Charles Schumer. Now it's a hell of an executive order, but back, just back in 2005, we got to vet him. We got to vet them all. <laughs> Man, Moon, Moon, is he, was Chuck Schumer that guy that was on the, uh, was it one of the Marvel characters? <laughs> he'd flip a coin, he'd flip a coin to decide, you know, which face he was going to turn towards you. I mean, that, it, it's just crazy. And then you got Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders saying, all we're doing, all this type of band is doing is, is going to is fuel the jihadists. So what, out of fear, out of fear of the jihadists, you should just open your borders and Think that well, if we're nice to them, we won't have we won't have this problem. I mean, wake up! Look at Florida. Look at what happened in California, San Bernardino. I mean, this is insane. Yeah, I know, and, and but this is so, you're dealing with the insane on the left. That's what you're dealing with. These people are insane. I just wish the average person that called himself, I'm caught in the middle. I'm not left or right. Would look at this and go, they are insane. Chucky e. Schumer cried two days ago. And now, all of a sudden, we go back just one year and find out, man, he was for vetting everybody. Anybody that came here with Trump said, okay, we're going to vet him. Oh, it's funny hateful. How, funny how you don't see this, though, on ABC, uh, NBC, CBS. You don't see him, uh, you know, showing this kind of thing. Well, I tell you what, Trump said something 20 years ago. They're going to find it, and yep. they're going to show it. Oh, right. you – hey – they don't find something on the Democrats said yesterday. <laughs> they don't. Oh, they wouldn't man. find nothing on Barack Obama when they would see something with Obama. They throw in the garbage can. Throw in the garbage can. Throw in the garbage can. I was wondering how long it was going to take him to open his mouth too. Didn't take long. Now, oh man, no, no, Obama, man, these leftists. They really were. They really were made to govern. Venezuela, Cuba, Russia, they, that's where they need to go. Anyway, I got to run. Thanks for the call. Thanks for the info. Thank you. One more real quick. Uh, Jason in Shreveport. Jason, how you doing? Moon, the voice of Louisiana. What's going on? Well, I want to talk about a word called WAP. WAP? Remember that word? WAP. Yeah, I WAP, WAP somebody upside the head, but go ahead. What are you talking about, WAP? Oh, you don't remember. I was raised by a World War II vet. Oh, without without papers, those, those, without papers. That's exactly okay. right, and that means an undocumented immigrant, somebody that's in this country illegally, and the same liberal Democrats villainized the word WAP a long time ago. You couldn't say WAP out loud, and now they want to call it all these politically correct terms like illegal or you know refugee and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, you know they're they're down at my local Circle K trying to buy beer with their Mexican passport. Yeah, what about what about your boy Chucky Schumer back in 2015? We got to vet them all. We got to vet them all. And then he's crying today. I mean, look, the left is not only hypocritical, they're evil. Right. They're evil because they will lie. Then they will tell another lie and tell another lie. And Obama was a lie. Healthcare was a lie. Opening the borders were a lie. And people are freaking out because what a Trump did. Thank God Trump's doing what he's doing. The only truth about a Democrat is the death panels associated with Obamacare. The only time I want to hear the word vet is when it's describing a veteran. I want to hear the word background check. i got to pass a background check to get a gun, and these people don't have to pass a background check to get in the United States. They can cut off somebody's head, and the next minute they put on their Converse tennis shoes and their Adidas pants and say they're a refugee. There's no way to determine who is and who is not until they get here. Yep, I got it. You got it, brother. All right, got to go. Got to take a break. More to come. More calls. All that. And why didn't get to the state stuff? I'm loaded up with state stuff today. 
We'll be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has that hotline. All righty. Uh, let me just take a call on this. Uh, Barry and Lafayette. How you doing, Barry? Hey, fine. I was uh, listening to you guys at the break playing uh, Trump saying you're fired, you're fired. Uh, <laughs> I was listening, yeah, just real quick, I was listening to another program earlier this morning. And they had a Trump impersonator, and he was saying that, you know, I really like the Muslim people. And he says, I've never felt uh, so close to them, especially around Christmas time when I'm singing Deck the Halls, fa la 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 la. <laughs> oh God, have mercy! But yeah. But oh, anyway, um, yeah. Well, anyway, um, I, I, I agree almost with everything that you guys talked about this morning with Mr. Briggs. Uh-huh. The o- the only problem is is that it's really not a level playing field. Okay. Um, when when gas in two thousand what thirteen two thousand fourteen when it spiked uh, really high and it was three dollars a gallon and plus. Um, you know, all these companies had gone up, delivery companies saying, oh, we have to have a fuel surcharge, airplanes. E- even when you go into a restaurant, order a beer mm-hmm. uh, or anything, oh, you know, uh, fuel surcharge, everything has gone up. But now that gas has gone down, the fuel sur- surcharge is still there. The university is still charging the students. Of now, fuel now, now let me stop you, though, Barry, because, uh, and by the way, I'm not arguing with you. I agree with you. That's wrong. The other thing. The other thing is, it's not the all companies putting the surcharges; it's, it's the businesses putting the surcharges, well, no, or the government putting the surcharges, not the right. Not I the agree, oil but but see, the oil companies. What what I'm what I'm getting at is that you know the oil companies. You know, I ha- I know they have nothing to do with it. They uh, they have you know, and I'm sure that you know they got to pay fuel surcharges when they get the fuel uh, wherever they're getting it, and they got to truck it, and move it, and all that. But what I'm saying is, is that. It's not a level playing field because these companies, even though they're imposing it, they're still imposing it on us. And the fuel companies are in oil and gas aren't saying anything about it. They're just saying, oh, we want more, higher and higher gas. That way our people can get back to work. But yet, you know, like I said, everybody is suffering. So um, I, although I understand that, you know, we need to bring these businesses back, I, I know that the oil and gas has been suffering. But, I mean, as a consumer... I mean, where well, do we draw well, the let me, line? Let me, let me stop you. Uh, when, okay. I, and by the way, once again, I can't argue what you said because I feel like you. But what happens is, if let's say we're paying 3 and $4 a gallon for gasoline. Or di- the diesel goes up with it normally. Diesel ought to be real cheap. I don't know why diesel got high. But anyway, somebody may can explain it to me. But what happens is, if I'm selling you a product or serve, a product, and I'm have to ship it, and, they being, and I'm being charged more, and this is what I tell people about business and taxes all the time. We, me and you pay all the taxes. Businesses are going to jack up the price, and, and it's not by choice. Sometimes they have to because they have a bottom line they have to meet. And once that price is too high, we're going to quit buying it. They know that. We know that. You know that. And uh, so I understand that. That's why when you raise taxes, things are jacked up. When you tax businesses, things are jacked up. Uh the bottom line is, if we weren't paying so many taxes, it probably wouldn't bother us as much. What you're talking about, too, is after the oil prices go way back down, these companies keep the price high. That's not right. No, it's that's not. not that's and, what's not right. And and you know as well as I do, you run a household. You know, you're going to say, well, you know, I welcome something that is low as gasoline is. Uh, because I'm paying high prices for everything that I got to go get. I got to go get in my car. I got to go to the grocery store. I got to go, you know, to pick up my child from school or whatever the case is. And when you fill it up, you say, man, I'm sure glad, you know, gasoline prices are cheap because, you know, a gallon of milk is four bucks or whatever, you know, and, you know, everything else is, you know, so I, I just, I just think that, you know, that there's got to be a give and take, um, you know, uh, Thank you. All right. Thanks for the call. I, and I understand what he's saying. I understand what he's saying. I really do. It's just, uh, I'm just telling you the price up is a good thing for our, 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 our people. And uh, I don't mind paying more either. I just decide I'm not, I don't mind paying more. I just can't pay more for everything. And uh, what they're doing is everything's so jacked up now. Uh, you know, the state, 
the state of Louisiana has now got the same old song. Public school leaders bracing for more cuts. Higher ed bracing for more cuts. Inspector General creates hurdles of corruption investigation. We don't have enough money. Uh, the one I like the most for some Louisiana families, they all want is not to have to bury some of our children because of budget cuts. Talking about special needs children and things of that nature. And they always use these dilemmas in these tough times to cry about more taxes. Now, some of these people, the, the ones with special need children, I want to help those people. I do. Yeah, because you're getting the benefit. I'm not getting the benefit. Some of these people need this, really need it. And some of these parents and families that by no fault of their own have children that they really need help. The problem I got is helping people who don't need help, who don't want to go to work. And there's hundreds of thousands of those people. They're black, they're white, they're brown. They're just not going to work. They didn't get a freebie. They're going to sit on their rear ends. That's the ones I'm mad at. You know, uh, that's the ones that shouldn't be getting. But I don't like this crying about the budget for 40 years now. Not 30 years, not 20 years, not for the last five years. It's every time we cry and we send all these people out that we got to feel sorry for because the legislature and the governor, they don't have priorities. They have no priorities. I see all this stuff. Uh, Hollis Milton, president of Louisiana Associated Superintendents. It's a broken record. We're broke. Possible layoffs. We're sick of it. Uh, you know, and, 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 but you got to understand something. The people paying the tax bill, we're sick of it. We're sick of our taxes going to something and never, nothing ever being fixed. Can y'all tell me what's been fixed since Edwin Edwards was the governor of the state? Our retirement system. It's $21 billion in a hole and growing every day. We don't fix roads. We've had money to fix roads. Okay? You just look at we We never fix the school system. We've been doing tax ref- We've been doing school reform so long, it's getting ridiculous. We don't fix anything. We don't try to fix anything. Our debt's growing out of proportion. You know? And all Edwards and all these people can do is cry about more taxes. And what what did we get for the tax dollars that we already spent? Schools leaders, school leaders said that because of lean times for nearly a decade, they lacked the new dollars for basic services. This time is especially worrisome, of course. The rising cost of health insurance is now another common complaint. Really? Y'all got high insurance too? Wow. I'm worried about y'all. Uh, Michael Falk, superintendent of the second-ranked central school system, listed nearly one million in mandatory increases the system faces, including teacher retirement costs, janitorial, and other contracts. It doesn't ever stop. They don't ever fix it. And folks, we I want you. I want to re- remind you one other thing. We gave them two point five billion dollars over the last couple of years, and we're not even close to fixing it because we have a spending problem and we have a spending priority problem. And until we address that, we're never going to fix what, what we're watching in Baton Rouge, ever, because it's never been tried. Now, Brandon, I went back to Edwards. And you got to go back, uh, wow, back in the, what is that, 70s and 80s with Edwards. Go back in the 72, 74, whenever you want. I forget when he won. But, uh, you got to go back 44 years. You know how long John Alario has been in the legislature? Every dang one of them. He's been the Senate president. He's been the Speaker of the House. He's been the adult in the room. He never gets blamed, but he always gets credit for being a leader. And where has he led us to? Disaster. That's where he's led us to. But yet... They still giving him the mantle. They still giving him the leadership. No matter if you're Republican or Democrat, he's our guy. He's the problem. He's the biggest problem we have. And then we got one term Governor Edwards. All right. By the way, we never heard from Edwards trying to get a program with him in an interview with him. We will go to the mansion. We will sit there and have as many state police people as he want around me to answer the questions. I'd love to sit down and have a conversation for two hours. Take a break. Be right back. Oh, uh, yeah. How y'all are? Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. But I feel protected. 
No, I got a KD in total security. <laughs> Why shouldn't I feel protected? You know, when you're looking for a security system at your home, you want to find somebody the best. You want to find somebody you can trust. Well, y'all are used to hearing Acadian ambulance and uh, about Acadian ambulance and how well they do for people. Well, this is Acadian total security. It's total security now, and that's what I got in my house. And I feel really protected. I feel like my home's protected right now while I'm doing the program because guess what? I got cameras everywhere. I've got a security system that I trust, and I trust Acadian Total Security, and you will too. You're not going to believe the technology on these systems now. Hey, you can pay a very small amount to get your home protected, but if you want to get on the, all the security stuff they have, you can pay, you can get everything you need to have your total home protected. And so give the pros at Acadian Total Security a call. Here's the number. 855-222-3426, 855-222-3426, and just go to the website, AcadianTotalSecurity.com. Do what I did. It's, it's so nice when you can close your uh, doors and stuff off your telephone now and protect it, and you can be out of town, out of state, Brandon, and look in your phone and go, wow, let me do this, let me do that, let me make sure, let me look around the house and see if anybody's there. I mean, it is such... A neat deal. Once again, Acadian Total Security, backed by our friends at Acadian Ambulance. AcadianTotalSecurity.com. Trust me, you will not be disappointed in what they're doing. All right, 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hot. Now, one more. Charles Schumer, he's crying about these refugees. But in 2015, just a little bit over a year ago, what did he say? Now, Brown, I think you got this back to back, huh? Mm-hmm. He's going to play what he said 2015 and what he's saying now about refugees. Listen to this. Every refugee has to be vetted, and uh, they have to make sure that there is no connection whatsoever with terrorism. If there is even a doubt, they should not be admitted. Every refugee has to be vetted. If there is even a doubt, they should not be admitted. This executive order... Was, was mean spirited and un American. And by the way, you know what they did? They took six or seven countries and said, hold up, 90 days, 120 days. Y'all got y'all support terrorism. We're gonna we, we're gonna vet you. That's it. It's not going around kicking people out. And he's talking about vetting. You heard him, Brent, vet everybody. We're gonna vet the heck out of them. Nice <laughs> crying. What a joke, these people. I'm telling you, Washington, D.C., on the, on the Upper East Coast, is no different than the West Coast. And the, and the liberals, I mean, it's, it's a showtime in Hollywood over there, showtime in Hollywood in Washington. They played all this. guy plays all this. And I'm like, Trump called him out, too, by saying, I know Schumer. I ain't never known him to be a crier. <laughs> and he's not, unless, unless we're trying to be fake. What a fake. But see, just think if the press covered this, Brandon. Every one of them covered. Well, Mr. Schumer, 2015, here's what you said. Now look what you said. How is it hate now and not then? Go back to Bill Clinton. Look what he said. It's amazing. It's strictly, simply amazing. Let's do Clinton one more time and we'll take some phone calls. All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country, are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more, by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace as recommended by the commission headed by former Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. We are a nation of immigrants, but we are also a nation of laws. It is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years, and we must do more to stop it. Totally against what Barack Obama did to this country. Totally different. Totally different. It was Bill Clinton 
former president, 1995, Charles Crazy Schumer, 2015, and of course the crime was just a few days ago. Let's go to Ralph in Bossier City. Ralph, how you doing? I am doing wonderful, man. Uh, you're talking about your, one of your callers talking about the price of gas. Yeah. Well, if you want to know why gas costs so much, and they, you know, they're not lowering it, everybody forgets ethanol. Ethanol, we subsidize ethanol companies because they can't make it on their own off what they sell the ethanol to the gas company. True, true. It costs more labor to blend this stuff, and you have to have more tanks and so forth. And by the way, so ethanol eth- 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 ethanol burns your engines to pieces, man. It's fairly when you're looking at that, lawnmowers and outdoor. I just fixed the boat it, using that stuff in my motor, and, and, and that was dumb on my part, and it's set there. And, and Well, it, really, it's dumb on the government's fault far from not being able to the oil companies were forced to use this and are forced to use it and they had to write a law that they wouldn't be responsible for all the damage it was going to do to the in, in, engine that's something that they never tell you but their buddies the government just like uh, bruce foods didn't get to put in a yam place in monroe you were there yep their buddies got somebody else and they make the money under the table but this this is something that people don't understand you lose 12 to 15 percent gas mileage for burning ethanol. If you run straight gas, you pick that up. They'll tell you on the cars if you don't have one rated to run um, 15 percent ethanol, don't run it because it'll tear your car up. Just five percent more will tear your car up. Well, the reason the reason the cars don't beat a little bit more is because you put a tank of gas in. If you're like me, I'm four or five days. I'm I'm needing another tank because I drive around maybe three four days. And uh, so it goes through so quick. But if it just sits there, it's not good. Well, it absorbs moisture out of the air, and that's what people don't know. And ethanol starts breaking down after two weeks exposed to the atmosphere. So if it sits, it creates an acid and eats up your little engines and so forth. It'll eat your car up, too, if it sits there. Yeah. But it's a little bit better metallurgy. But it's a cost that we're paying for so the government's friends can make money off the ethanol plant. It serves no purpose except to take money from me and you and give to their wealthy friends who help promote them. Uh, it's all, like it's solar all, energy. It's always, pay for itself. always, always a, uh, always an angle, and you can bet it's financial. But as my friend or my yeah. cousin told me one time, politics is about a group of people getting them elected, and that person turn around and taking care of your buddies, and that's what it's about: money. It ain't about it ain't about God, family, country. It's not about the Constitution. Guarantee you they got people in the legislation taking money from foreign governments, Clintons, and making sure that we screw up our policies uh, uh, from a a real immigration policy that makes sense to doing what we've been doing under Barack Obama was open your your house or your door and let people come in and live there. Unbelievable. Anyway, got to run. Appreciate the call. Let's move on. Shreveport, we go. Mark, how you doing, sir? Fine, man. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Hey, look, I I was listening to the caller earlier today that was discussing uh, gas and the price of gas and why the price doesn't go down and and the oil business. Uh, You know, there needs to be a differentiation between the oil and gas producers and the oil and gas, uh, the gas jobbers, we call them, that sell the gas and the refineries. You know, I'm an oil, oil producer myself up here in Cattle Pine Island field. And, you know, we get about 40 bucks a barrel, $45 a barrel right now per barrel. That barrel goes to the refinery, and they make four to $500 on that one barrel of oil. But yet, we're the ones that are hiring the people. We, we hire the rig crews. We hire the service companies and, you know, pay at the mom-and-pop grocery store down the street getting our lunch. We're the ones that are, are hiring these people, not, the, not these companies they're talking about selling gas. It's a totally different group of people. And and if, if you check the records, you'll find out that us, the the, the mom and pop operators like I am, that, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've got 30 whales, which sounds like a lot, but they're, they're about an eighth of a barrel per day whale. They're, mm-hmm. they're not a barn burner. Yeah. We produce 60 to 70% of the oil that's produced in the state of Louisiana, not the majors. Wow. Yeah, wow. The well, majors no. do produce the majority of the oil. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you letting us know. I know small business plays a big part, big part in the oil and gas industry, a gigantic part, and that's why we needed to come back because it's those good jobs. Anyway, 
Thanks. Thanks for the call. Uh, golly, Brandon, already. I, yep. <laughs> Let's remind people, Moon, real quick. Don't go. Don't forget to go to moongrafon.com for the podcast. Moongrafon.com. We podcast every day. Check us out on Facebook as well.